Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of the District of Squamish for Tuesday, March 3rd. Hot following, the Portsmouth, Plots, Squamish, Millennial. We are meeting tonight on the traditional territory of the Squamish Nation. Uh, motion to adopt the agenda. Second by Council French, seconded by Council Herford. All those in favor? All those motion carries. Any notice of motion? No. Any consideration of unscheduled public attendance? This would be anyone in the audience who has an issue they wish to discuss that can't wait two weeks. Seeing that, Council, any notice of motion? Okay, so we have three delegations this evening. Uh, first up is the Squamish Nonprofit Network. And I'm against who is here. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor, Council, members of our community. My name is Diana, and I am the volunteer chair of the Squamish Nonprofit Network. It's an informal network of um, over 90 members, I think now, who choose to work collectively to achieve not only their own goals, but also the collective goal of community betterment. I am leading an initiative aligned with and supported by Under One Roof Squamish, and welcome Maureen from Squamish Helping Hands. Um, and in the next five minutes, I'd like to share more about the who, what, where, when, um, how of this initiative, and to um, explain why we're here to request your support from council and district. To introduce the what of what I want to speak about, I read a riddle in Squamish on one of our event posters. It was probably mid last month, so some of you may have seen it. And it goes, what is freely given, but invaluable? Tonight, we are here, or I am here, to speak about volunteerism and its invaluable role in our community. We're seeking council support to help us launch a unique online volunteer recruiting tool, and it's called volunteerconnector.org. Why do we need your support? In our community, there's a significant challenge for new and existing residents to find meaningful volunteer opportunities. And organizations are finding it harder and harder to find volunteers to help deliver more and more services for the growing community. We have no volunteer center, nor do we have any single online connecting tool. Both volunteers and organizations currently find the search depleting, discouraging, but we think with this volunteerconnector.org, it will be very helpful enabling and much easier. As our community grows, this new online tool will better enable and connect our community, and it is aligned with many strategic plans within our community, such as your strategic plan of connecting neighborhoods and connecting people. Um, also, Under One Roof found that it was very much aligned with their mission and vision for the new facility. The Squamish Public Library has a vision around connecting people and certainly many more organizations such as our community foundation and uh, as they describe in vital statistics and <coughs> vital signs. Um, and I could spend a lot of time talking why volunteering is good for our community and I'm sure as all of you who currently volunteer know that volunteering really connects people, it builds resiliency and it grows a stronger community. It also contributes to the capacity for so many amazing community nonprofits to do good work, which is tricky as our community is growing so quickly and budgets stay so tight. It helps deliver wonderful festivals, it helps deliver events that bring our community great enjoyment and pride. It also, um, we have organizations and volunteers that deliver unrelenting environmental, educational, emergency and other health services that help to make our community well and safe. Volunteering teaches volunteers many new skills and life lessons that we can put to use in our community. It also builds friendships, connects people, and enriches the lives within our community. So after eight months exploring what other communities do around volunteer centers and engaging their community stakeholders, we talked to many of our own stakeholders and within our nonprofit network, we um, our, this Volunteer Connector initiative is taking shape and we officially began and launched it as a project on February 6th of uh, last month after we received initial funding and support from 100 Women Who Care, the Squamish chapter. 
and for this we are very grateful. We're now working to implement the plan to launch this tried and true. Um, it's a free tool, the online uh, connecting tool, Volunteer Connector. <coughs> and we would like to have all of our nonprofits that engage volunteers signed up prior to National Volunteer Week, which begins April 19, 2020. So this central one-stop spot is where our community can go to find volunteer opportunities that are meaningful to them. It's a simple searchable tool. It's already in use by over 2,000 organizations across Canada, primarily in Western Canada. Um, and with the alignment of under one roof for Squamish Helping Hands, we will have both a virtual tool and a physical um, space to enable connection opportunities for volunteers in our community. We want people to be connecting and to feel more connected and valued within our community. So how can the council and the district hopefully support this project? We're asking for you to endorse this tool as our community's virtual volunteer center, our one-stop spot, so to speak, for connecting volunteers with organizations, volunteerconnector.org. Number two, we're asking for collaboration to promote this tool publicly leading up to National Volunteer Week. For example, the newsletter, possibly with the <coughs> library's newsletter, and we'd love to explore other collaboration opportunities. We would also be excited if the district would proclaim April 19th to 24th as volunteer, National Volunteer Week in Squamish. That is the National Volunteer Week. And lastly, we're looking for additional funding in the amount of $5,525. I would like to ask if Council would consider this from their contingency to help us to focus successfully to complete the budgeted work of this project. Um, it would help us then we don't have to search out additional funding. And the project is to run for four months. The funding supports promotion, displays, training, educational opportunities for our nonprofit organizations, wages, and the public launch at National Volunteer Week. In conclusion, I'd like to acknowledge the support and efforts of our SNN task team of three that um, did a lot of the leg work leading up to February. I'd like to thank Squamish Helping Hands and Under One Roof for stepping up to be our regional host who will then sustain this tool following the launch. And lastly, I'd like to thank 100 Women Who Care, the Squamish chapter, for their funding that kicked off this initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm, I'd like to know if you've had any connection or involvement with the hotspot, which is operated by the Squamish Volunteer Centre Society. Yes. The hotspot, which is operated by the Squamish Volunteer Centre Society, um, no longer acts as a volunteer centre. They are listed, unfortunately, on Volunteer Canada's um, website as our volunteer center, but if you speak with them, and I have spoken with various members there, it is, uh, their focus is on immigration and settlement services, on literacy, um, but they don't have capacity. They do engage volunteers, in fact I met with them today and they are signing up to become registered on this tool and to use the tool as well. So they support this initiative, but they are no, yeah, they, their name is a little confusing with the work they do. Uh, similarly, I'm curious if you've connected with the Squamish Chamber and their volunteer board. Yes, Louise Walker has been involved. I've also spoken with Tourism Squamish, and um, they're very much in support of this. The, the, the uh, initiative that they have is a Facebook page, but it's not a searchable tool that's, that is, I guess, um, strong or um, easy to use as, as this tool. So this tool allows youth and families to search different parameters so it has some different functionality. But they're definitely in support and they're willing to collaborate with us in, as we launch this tour. Okay. Another question? Yeah, um, and then I just want to clarify for the funding request that that is in addition to the amount that will be received through the Community Enhancement Grant? We did, re Squamish Nonprofit Network received funding for the Community Enhancement Grant and that was specifically for National Volunteer Week. So that was prior to this project coming 
to this point and, and being launched. So it's a little different with respect to the initiative. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Anderson. Some of our uh, eager volunteers are not online, and in particular seniors. And I wonder if any consideration has been given to having a traditional volunteer board, whether that may also be hosted at Helping Hands or at some other facility, whether that might be a, a, an affiliated uh, initiative within your project. Yes, within this project, the interest is that when Under One Word group is open and launched, that there will be space for us to have pop-up, we'll call it, for this time, uh, volunteer centers, so physical centers. We, part of the funding that we are asking for is to allow us to have a display that will promote volunteerism in our community and with this tool we can go around to the schools and the university and other public events to also promote volunteerism and, and help people who may not be online to understand what um, opportunities there are. Uh, also, we've spoken with the library, and Hillary is very keen for the library to support this tool so that if there are people that do not have computers that need support, that the library will be a resource for people to go in and find out more, and, and she said they would be happy to support that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions on this side? Dr. Do you happen to have, like, with the community enhancement grants, there is typically some budget information submitted and project description so on. Do you have any of that information for this project? I do have um, a project plan and I do have a project budget. I have not submitted to the district because we were too late for the community enhancement grant by the time this um, initiative got the lakes that it got. Um, so I am happy to share that and come forward with that. All right, so I think there were a few asks. So one, that um, we endorse the volunteerconnector.org as our community's virtual volunteer center, that uh, the district use its communications channels in the lead up to National Volunteer Week, April 19th, 24th, to promote the volunteer connector uh, tool, uh, that we proclaim April 19th to 24th National Volunteer Week in the District of Squamish, and that we uh, set aside $5,525 of contingency to put towards the launching of this tool. Did I capture all of your apps? You did. Okay. <laughs> so, Council, I'm happy to do those one at a time. Um, if people would like to discuss them. So, one, let's do the easy one. Uh, that we proclaim April 19th and 24th National Volunteer Week in the District of Swamp. I'll move that. Second by Council Jennifer. All those in favor? <clears throat> opposed, motion carries. That was the easiest one, got that. Um, that uh, council endorsed the volunteerconnector.org as our community virtual volunteer center. Moved by Council French, seconded by Council Anderson. All those in favor? Opposed, motion carries. We're on a roll. Uh, that um, Council asked staff to work with the Squamish Nonprofit Network to uh, promote the volunteerconnector.org uh, initiative uh, through our communications channels in the lead up to National Volunteer Week. I'll move back. Second. Second by Councilor Stoner. Any conversation on that? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. The tricky one's always the one about money. So, uh, Council. Uh, Squamish Nonprofit Network is looking for 5525 from this year's contingency, which we haven't spent any of yet. Always place to start. Uh, can I just ask a clarifying question what the total budget is? The total budget is 15525. Uh, sorry, 8.5. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and if council, because I know you all of your computers are on cheap, go to volunteerconnector.org. You can see some of the current listings for Squamish there. Um, uh, and sorry, Ms. Gamsoni said that this money will be used for promoting the site and making sure that um, <coughs> uh, people know how to use it. A display. And a display. Display and education. Yeah. So we'll be doing some webinars and we'll also be doing some management, volunteer management training for our nonprofits to help them to understand the 
recruiting, retention, recognition of volunteers according to uh, the Canadian Code of Volunteer Best Practices. Do you have a sense of the energy behind this? You've obviously been out talking to nonprofits. Um... We surveyed our nonprofit network through a Survey Monkey. We had, um, I guess it was 34 respondents, and 100% um, were in support of this tool, and 99 virtually said they would use it. One of them didn't use a great deal of volunteerism in their organization, but. Um, yeah, so I, I sense it's a lot of interest, um, and anybody I've spoken to in the community about it say, oh, it's about time. <laughs> so yes, there's. I've also spoken to many stakeholders who have validated um, the project and, and also expressed great interest in seeing this work go forward. And you mentioned that um, Helping Hands would be sort of the regional post, so yes. is there, um, data, information, like how, how we always have um, a vital science report comes out and then we're also trying to measure from the district uh, different social determinants through our OCP measurements. So is there data we'll be able to? Yes, yeah, so and part of the role of the regional host is to have someone that is there that can answer questions, but we also have the support of the uh, Propellus organization of Calgary, which is actually the Calgary Volunteer Centre that has been working with this tool for many years. As a regional host, there is a dashboard that gives metrics to that region. So all of our organizations within our community will fall into that regional host view and they will be able to capture information about the number of volunteer applications that have come through. And there's also indicators around the hours. If, if those organizations go on to use a scheduling tool that is also available. So there's a recruiting, a scheduling, and some management tools. So it just depends on what organizations use. But for sure, we will see the volunteer interest. We'll also see how many views of that tool, how many people search the tool. So there are a variety of metrics. And just to clarify, is there a cost to either the organization or the volunteer to use the tool? Good question. There are no costs to the volunteer or to the organization to sign up to do the recruiting portion of um, volunteer engagement. There are additional tools that have recently, just recently been launched around scheduling and management and that organizations can choose to sign up on fee for service. Um, basis. So if you're doing an event that is only one month, you buy it for one month. But the all the recruiting is for free. And that was one of the driving forces why we selected this tool, because there are some tools locally um, used by other organizations in BC, and, but this one, uh, it big cost. You have, as an organization, you typically have to pay a fee to be a member to sign up. This is free to all own property. Mm -hmm. All right. One more question about the funding. Um, if we were to uh, counter offer a lower amount than what you're asking, would uh, what kind of impact would that have on your organizing at this point? It means that time will need to be spent finding additional funds to complete the project, or we'll have to sacrifice perhaps some of the initiatives that were planned, be they education or um, speakers and. Um, yeah, so it, it may impact just the amount of time that a resource is available to do the work of promoting and engaging the nonprofits. So it could affect it. I, I see it as affecting how long it takes for people to sign up. Anything else? I guess just for on that, um, open to the idea, but I would sort of appreciate some of the you know, you know, normal background we get with the community has kind of request. I'll move that council supports uh, the Squamish Nonprofit Network to the tune of uh, $5,525. That's true. I'll second that. Do you want to speak to your yeah. I'll speak to it. Um, thanks so much for coming to present and for answering all the detailed questions that we have. Um, I am personally very excited about this sort of tool. I think volunteerism in our community is really critical 
And a big piece of that is connecting people and making sure they understand what opportunities are out there. Um, and often the volunteer organizations that need volunteers are lacking in capacity to get that information out there. So this is really one of those critical pieces that will allow our community to hopefully connect more. And so thank you for your work. And I'm uh, happy to be supporting this motion. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll speak to the motion. Um, this is, I think, a great investment in our community. And um, it also, because of the work, the partnership with um, Squamish Helping Hands and Under One Roof, and the idea of pop-ups, it, it can do both. It can be this virtual online tool, um, which is easy for people to do from home, but also starts to create um, a place where people can go and connect face-to-face um, and meet some of these organizations, you know, sort of under that pop-up lounge. I think because community connectivity is such a big part of our strategic plan, this feels like a really big bang for the buck. And uh, so appreciative of the Squamish Nonprofit Networks. And your volunteerism to do this, um, and I know you've been pursuing this for a while now, and, and building the um, I will be supporting the motion um, with some hesitation. So first of all, I, I was heavily involved with the Test of Metal for many, many years. And one of the reasons that that event came to an end was volunteer burnout. So I recognize the importance of uh, some kind of coordinating body to keep our volunteer organizations healthy and thriving. And I see this as one of the solutions to that. And I want council to know that this amount of money is making me a little bit nervous being offered in this way. Um, it's the upper end of my comfort level for um, money to be used out of contingency. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, the, uh, Overall, the project I really, I really like. Uh, I'll be supporting. I'll be supporting the motion with with some hesitation. I think maybe it's just a matter of process in, internally, internally to us. Um, that 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 ask caught me uh, a little off guard, but I, I do see it as a uh, as a, a good investment into into the um, the resiliency of our volunteer organizations through, throughout town, the work that they do. Um, but similar to Councillor French, I was a little um, funding it through this. Uh, uh, in, in, this, in this way is a little, is probably on the edge of where I'm, where I'm comfortable, but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, I'll be supporting this one uh, at this point. Thank you. Any other comments? So I, I do really like the initiative um, and I've been in many volunteer organizations where finding more volunteers is, is a challenge, so I appreciate what's being done here. Um, you know, I I'll express my preference to have um, some more details with making sorts of decisions, and especially because we made a lot of hard decisions with community enhancement grants, but a lot of groups that were all doing very important, valuable things. So, um, but um, seeing where the, the floor is going, I, I don't want to stand in the way of this, so I, I will be voting yes to the community going forward. Just a, a note out to the, the universe if, if uh, would love for these to come forward with, with a bit more uh, project detail in the future. I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? To carry the witnesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to the 100 Women in Care who provided the initial speech that we spent on. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to switch the order a little bit. And I'll have um, Mr. Ken Perry come up to do their proclamation. Uh, Mayor and Council, it's, uh, I'm very pleased to be before you again. I think last time I was here was also on the topic of Tai Chi in uh, early September. And that's when we discussed the milestone of the uh, 20th anniversary of celebrating and practicing Tai Chi in Squamish. And we're very pleased to have Councillor John French come and join us. So he represented the district uh, very well. And it was quite successful. We had 70 participants. 
And it was a great afternoon. We had demos, we had free introduction classes, and uh, we had lots of refreshments, so it turned out really, really well. And now I'm on, on to the next uh, milestone. So uh, 2020 is the 50th anniversary of the celebration of Tai Chi arts in Canada. So as a result of that, um, I just wanted to make you aware, you do have a copy of the uh, proclamation, I'm sure, but you do have 40,000 participants worldwide in 26 countries. Uh, we have over 11,000 participants in Canada in 330 locations. And we have 1,200 volunteers that are instructors. So, you know, we're very, very much on board with uh, the volunteer program as well. So it's, um, it's a special anniversary for us. Uh, we're active in the community. Um, tai Chi Arts is very beneficial to all who undertake it. I personally have benefited from it. And I know a lot of people that have come to classes that have benefited uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally from uh, practicing the Tai Chi Arts. So I encourage everyone to try it. And locally in Swamish, as I mentioned, we've been doing it for 20 years. You know, we have a good solid base of 25 to 30 participants that are active in the community, doing a lot of demos, uh, interactive with the community. Uh, we do demos like at the um, wellness fairs, at the farmers markets, at logger sports, at very various community locations. And 50th anniversary being a special year, we've undertaken to do 50 special demos in the province of British Columbia and Squamish is targeted to do one. So we're going to bring a, a large group of Tai Chi uh, participants to Squamish on a special day and we're going to have a large demo and ask the community to join in with us. But having said that, because it is a special year for us, um, we would like to get the support of the District of Squamish in proclaiming Saturday, November the 7th as the 50th anniversary date of um, uh, anniversary of Tai Chi Arts in Canada. And um, we're just looking for your support in doing that. Thank you very much. Council, any questions? I'll move the recommendation. This is my council's going. Second by council. Instead of proclaiming November 7th, 2020 as Tai Chi Arts 50th Anniversary Day in the District of Squamish. Thank you very much. I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. And just one further note. Uh, the reason I'm here early in the year is because we're having a national retreat at the end of the month. And we're going to be displaying that from all the communities where we have our proclamation. So the town of Squamish will be well represented at our retreat. Thank, Thank you very you much, much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Okay, next up is our staff around our proclamation for a public works deep. Mr. Kinshenko and friends, if they want to join us. Moral support from the audience. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Ben Kinshenko. I am the Technical Operations Manager for the District of Squamish Public Works Department. Um, tonight I am here to ask that Council proclaim May 17th, 23rd, 2020 as Public Works Week in the District of Squamish uh, and to request your individual support and participation in the event. Uh, both the Can American and Canadian Public Works Association sponsor Public Works Week and more than 30,000 communities across North America participate. The goal of Public Works Week is to educate citizens on the important role that the municipal services provided by public works departments play in their daily lives. Planning, building, managing, and operating at the heart of local communities to maintain and improve everyday quality of life. Public Works Week events include career talks with uh, Quest and House Sound Secondary students, infrastructure tours to the public, post-secondary health officer students, and the District of Squamish staff. Um, public education and outreach communications include a series of short YouTube videos um, showcasing some of the tasks that public works staff can complete. Uh, they're really popular last year. Uh, and then the main event, of course, is Public Works Day. Uh, 2019, we hosted more than 300 grade four or five students 
and we put them through 12 education stations uh, and showcasing various aspects of public works, including water conservation, sewer source control, wastewater treatment plant operations, parks and horticulture, SCADA, GIS, fleet, and equipment demonstrations. PP Local 2269 and the Staff Social Committee sponsor barbecues for students, teachers, volunteers, and staff. And we also uh, have added an equipment rodeo in recent years. Over the past decade, the District of Squamish has received numerous awards from both Canadian and British Columbia Public Works Associations for the quality of our Public Works Week celebrations. If approved, 2020 will mark the district's 10th year of participation in Public Works Week. And then finally, in the words of our Director of Public, Work, or Director of Public Works, Bob Smith, if nothing else, at least we get the yard cleaned up. <laughs> At least the yard gets clean. Not a problem. Well, this is a no brainer. Do we know what color the t shirts are this year? Or is that a surprise? That's a surprise. We haven't, we haven't decided on t shirt color yet. We've got a good, good idea for a graphic. Uh, thank you for the great report and looking forward to it. I missed it last year and so I'm really excited to be here this time around. Are you in your calendar? Any other comments? Oh, this is such a great initiative and I do try and make it every year. I think I've missed one since I've been elected and um, so appreciate the work that all the staff put into this. Um, and you can just feel the energy from the kids that are there on the day and then hearing the stories from staff who participated in the tours and equipment rodeo and I mean you guys knock it out of the park every year. I think like how can it get better? And then you guys come up with a station and I think, oh that's better than last year. So um, it's such a great event. So it's a, it's a pleasure to proclaim that week. Um, to draw more attention to the work that you all do in our community that sometimes uh, goes unnoticed. But Maybe perhaps we taking for granted, but it's so important. I will call the question. Call it the bigger. Call it the more Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The rest of this agenda should go pretty quick. Um, we don't have anything uh, in terms of public hearings or timed items, but we do have some uh, things to adopt this evening. So can I ask someone to move the housing agreement bylaw? Moved by Councillor Herford, second by Councillor French. All those in favor? Opposed? Council Carey. Someone move the season charter bylaw. Moved by Councillor French, second by Councillor Anderson. All those in favor? Opposed? Council Carey. Uh, we have one staff report tonight. Good morning. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Linda Clausen. I'm the manager of financial operations and the acting CFO. Today we'll be talking a little bit about investments and I uh, just want to bring forward some information and a recommendation as well. I will provide a little bit of background, a little bit about uh, authority and objectives of an investment program. Uh, we'll talk about some options and recommendation in our next steps. So back in 2017, the district staff participated in a finance um, Municipal Finance Authority survey that would gauge MFA customers to determine if there was enough interest to develop a specifically socially, social responsibility investment or SRI, SRI products. The result of that survey showed that there was not the interest at the time to pursue developing an SRI, SRI specific investment. However, MFA or Municipal Finance Authority was committed to look for investments that would meet the needs of those clients that were interested. As a result, in 2019, MFA announced the long-term MFA mortgage 
fund investment and began to seek municipalities that were interested to invest. The District of Squamish was committed to an expression of interest at that time. The first phase of this issue was in January and the second phase is in a few months from now. Also recently, MFA went to their board for approval to set up an MFA fossil fuel free <coughs> bond fund. And we'll have more on, the, on these two funds a little later in the presentation. The purpose of this report is to provide council with investment information and to, um, if council decides to go with the MFA mortgage fund, there is a liquidity um, risk in that it is a long term fund versus a bond fund is a short term fund. So some of the objectives in our investment program is to protect principal. This is the most important um, objective in our investment, in our, our investment um, portfolio, and to also uh, ensure that we have a diversification of our portfolio. Also, liquidity. We like to match our liquidity <coughs> with the um, projects that we have ongoing. Um, Right now, a lot of our cash is sit are sitting in cash, so it's very liquid. And return on investment, although it's not, um, it's the protecting of the principal and the liquidity is the most important, and return on investment is the next one. It's secondary only to liquidity and um, protect protecting the principal. Now, typically, um, the community charter has provided the financial officer as being responsible for investing municipal funds. It has been our culture here that we're not, we don't necessarily come to council for approval to invest funds, but we come to council because we have these unique funds that we'd like to just share with, with council. Also, in section 183 of the community charter, it <coughs> has some. It, 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 it allows us to, it tells us what we can invest in. So basically risk-free investments. So here we have the two funds. Um, so to, a while back we were looking for some long-term investments and that's where we came upon the MFA mortgage fund. The objective of this fund is to yield, uh, to ha provide a higher yield and to provide us with some uh, diversification benefits for the long term. It consists of two PH and PH and N um, funds. It consists of a mortgage pension trust and a short term bond and mortgage fund. The the split between those two funds are 85% and 15%. So the mortgage pension fund is 85% and the short term bond and mortgage fund is 15%. Uh, it, it's important to understand that it invests only in first mortgages on income producing commercial properties in Canada. So there's very low risk in that fund. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the district expressed interest in this mortgage fund back in November of 2019, as MFA was trying to gather interest to see who would be interested in that. Current yield in this mortgage fund is 1% higher than the current bond rate, bond funds in MFA. And as mentioned earlier, the liquidity is a little bit of a risk here. We can't on a dime just take the funds out. We are committed for three to five years on this, um, in this fund. And this fund, you have to be queued to get into the fund. As, as you express interest, the um, mortgage manager or the, the investment managers go out and find the mortgages to help to, for the investment. Originally, the intent for this fund was to be fossil fuel free. However, because we need some kind of liquidity sleeve, about 10% of the fund, so that there is some liquidity <coughs> in it, um, some of the short-term bonds may be invested in um, 
some companies that are related to fossil fuels. <coughs> so there's a small portion that is. That's why they, they tag it almost fossil fuel free. Now moving over to the MFA fossil fuel free bond fund. Again, it's managed by PH and N. It is a shorter term, maybe two or three, two to three years. Um, the good news is here is that um, PH and N created the fund and will pay for all the screening costs to ensure that there, uh, certain companies are not part of that, that fund. And MFA just went to the board to get approval for this fund last week and they will be announcing it later in March. So it's not quite available for us yet. And it is a liquid fund. So we don't, you know, once we go in, it's possible for us to come back out again and match our, our, our cash requirements. And it, the yield is about the same as the MFA bond fund, which is, at the time of this presentation, was 1.6%. So for this, this slide, <coughs> currently the District of Squamish has cash and investments of about $92.8 million, it was, as in my report. 84% of that is in cash, and 16% of that is in short-term or uh, mid-term GICs. And in this slide, I would like to demonstrate basically that we have room for the $5 million in the longer term. In the, the 15 million is basically our, in the black box there, is our operating cash that we'll need on a um, continuous basis. We have a little bit of emergency uh, funds. And then the blue boxes there represent our financial plan cash requirements as from our reserves. And that remainder is what we have left over going past the past the five years. This does not include about 20 million we would put back into reserves. So, but I did want to demonstrate we have enough cash to go into the future beyond the five years. Um, so that brings me to our recommendation is that the District of Squamish consider Council's strategic priorities and future investment decisions in its investment program, and that the District of Squamish invest $5 million in the MFA mortgage fund for three to five years. And if our next steps are, prepare the necessary documentation and move forward with the investment uh, recommendation. And staff needs to complete a long-range financial plan and match investments and liquidity with the district's cash requirements. We need to go beyond the five years. So. Any questions, Council? Councilor Pettengill, and then Council Um So just looking at our, our holdings of GICs and cash at Scotia, it looks like how we um, looked at um, the community banks, the uh, credit union. Credit union. Yeah. Is, is that an option for us? It is an option if we choose to do that. Um, credit unions at this point, that we've got some pretty good rates at this point. Uh, they're even higher than the MFA rates. So we could choose to go up to a credit union. And this would be the only sort of bond, because on the sheet I'm looking at, I don't see other bonds and so on, so what you're proposing here, this would be our sort of medium term investment other than GICs, and otherwise it's GICs and cash, we don't have it. Right now, that's all we have is GICs and cash, and we're getting a very good rate, considering um, that a lot of the rates in MFA are a little bit lower for short term holdings. The longer term holdings provides us with a little bit better of a rate. And I think we want to diversify into a longer term holding as well, maybe looking at a different institution rather than everything in this portion. Uh, final one, uh, almost fossil fuel free, does that mean like 1% of the fund, up to 1% is fossil fuel possibly or up to 30% or? There is a 10% 
portion of that fund that they hold for liquidity. That means that when people can want to get out of the fund, they have some cash there for them to get out of the fund. Inside that 10%, there's a small amount that uh, bonds they may be holding that are fossil fuel, maybe fossil fuel um, directed. I'm just curious why the staff recommendation is to invest in the MFA mortgage fund as opposed to the fossil fuel free bond. So, um, part of it is we have made a commitment in November to, or we sh have shown interest in November to um, MFA for the um, for the uh, mortgage fund. And part of it is the mortgage fund provides us with a little bit better return. And um, at the time, I, at the time, I'm not sure, we didn't have the other option as well. However, council can make a different choice. Yeah, you can go back to that screen where you laid out the, the, the features of the, of the two. Yeah, and uh, I think you might have just touched on it. That was the only because I, I see a lower fee. It's a lower yields the same. It says the yields the same, and no lead time. Like if there seems to be like a lot of that so, screen makes a case for the, yeah. for the bond fund, does it not? So MFA has a bond fund, and we're not talking about the MFA bond fund. The MFA bond fund right now is one point six seven percent. If we were to choose the MFA mortgage fund, it would be 0.75 to 1% higher than 1.67. So the mortgage fund does provide you a better yield. And the bond fund, um, the MFA fossil fuel free bond fund is about the same as the MFA bond fund, which is which we're not really talking about here. Okay, thank you. I think that, yeah, that, that, that was the bit that I just wasn't sure where yeah. um, okay. well, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I just want to lobby for a little more clarity in motions like this. Um, 5MM is jargon that most people don't understand, and I'd appreciate if that was spelled out clear. And MFA, uh, confirming that's um, Municipal Finance Authority? Municipal Finance Authority. It'd be yes. great if we could have those spelled out in these motions so it's clear to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I the fossil fuel free bond fund, does it require a minimum investment from municipalities at this time to proceed? They did not, no. Uh, I've asked about it, but they did not require a minimum. Oh, I know. Do they need a certain number of municipalities to participate up to a certain uh, dollar amount? Originally, they did. From the letter from New Westminster we have, that we received, mm -hmm. originally they re they uh, required a hundred million dollars of initial investment so that uh, it would cover the screening costs and the the setup costs. However, when I spoke with um, Municipal Finance Authority in the last few weeks. That's no longer required because they have the fund manager, PHNN, is actually setting up the fund and taking on the screening costs. Um, so I'm being distracted by the feedback that we keep getting. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Not, right not right now, but before, but not right now. Keeps coming and going, right? And I'm not just hearing things? Okay. Um, and then, once you do that sort of long-range planning, do we feel that we'll have more room to invest in longer term? More to invest in bond funds or just longer term investments that do get us that higher rate of return? I think, yes. I think that's a short answer, but I think once we do the long-range plan and look at our master plans going out between 20, 25 years, we can decide how we want to invest in a how long as well as compared to debt versus savings and where we think it would be most beneficial for us. Okay. So I'm just trying to absorb all the, the numbers so that the fossil fuel free fund, the new one, 
our money's locked in for two and a half years, it looks like. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, commitment for the, the MFA mortgage fund? It's a long-term fund, three to five years. They consider it a long-term fund. So it could be almost the same if it would be three or 2.5. It, the risk is that the bond fund is more liquid. It's easier to get your money out. However, with the mortgage fund, you have mortgage backing that fund. It's a little bit more difficult to get your money out. So it could, like if you needed it in 60 days, it might take you 90 or 120 after three years. It, it was very important for the Municipal Finance Authority to share that the council need to understand that it's not as liquid it, of a fund, but it provides a better rate of return. Nice for clarity on the motions that the district has formally considered council strategic priorities and future investment decisions. Do we specifically mean the climate emergency? I'm just wondering if we can be more specific. If that was the intent, is that it would we would start to put this fossil through the lens of all of our investments going forward? Um, or did you mean more broadly? I I did mean more broadly. Only I did consider that, and I was wondering if that was too narrow because you could have a fossil fuel free fund, but it might not be a socially responsible fund. So that's why I brought in it up to consider the council strategic priorities. Um, at least those were my thoughts. So it would include environmental responsibility, social responsibility. Pretend. And then did council direct the mortgage fund expression of interest, or was that a staff decision? It was a staff decision. Like, mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, typically we don't come in front of council to get direction for investments. Um, but they originally... expression of interest was was provided so before I actually put a motion on the floor I will just put this out there that I I would I would like to see that money actually move into the fossil fuel free bond fund um, following on from the first recommendation that's in the staff report that the district of Swamish so consider council strategic priorities and the climate emergency in future. Maybe I should just put a motion on the floor because <laughs> that might be more appropriate and we can see where it goes. So I will move. I'll just, does anybody have any more questions? Okay. Oh, RCA wants to speak. I was just um, <coughs> wondering if through Ms. Klassen we could get any clarification on any risk with that or any further staff comment on if we put the money in the, the bond fund as opposed to the mortgage fund. Um, I'm not sure if there is a risk. I'm sure MFA will be disappointed. I've already delayed the first phase because it came on right at the heels of, oh, <laughs> didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, in January when we had a change in staff. So um, they may be disappointed, but it, it was just an expression of interest. So I don't know if we have any risk there. Okay, can we split the five million between the two? Council wish, uh, or is there a minimum? I don't know of a minimum, but if council wishes, I can definitely do that. Council, you want me to put a motion on the floor? Anyone can put a motion on the floor. 
thought you wanted to, so I'll go back to you. Yeah, I will test this one. Um, so, let me touch actually a, a slight amendment to the first staff recommendation that it read that the District of Squamish consider council strategic priorities and the climate emergency in future investment decisions in its investment program. So I'll move back. Is there a second there? Any discussion on that part? I'll just speak to it. Yep. But I think it's really important that that clarity around the climate emergency come through and I appreciate staff's mm -hmm. response um, of balancing all four components and pillars of sustainability. But I do think that really highlighting that component of the climate emergency and our net zero targets is, is a critical component. <coughs> That's what you're I will support this. Um, I wonder, and I think it's a good clarification, I wonder if at some point we, we come up with a more fulsome policy around our investments. And, and you know, one of the things that has been in the back of my mind is not just the sort of ethical and imperative to deal with the climate crisis, but all the risk analysis I see of putting money in pocket for the people that to your risk perspective, it seems like it's you know, outside of my uh, comfort level in, in terms of, of, of risk. So we may want to speak to in a broader policy about our level of comfort with risk and some of those other things. But I, I will support this as well. Anybody else want to speak to this? I would just see if I can get a counselor or if you want it. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. All right, now to the investment decision. So I will move that the District of Squamish invest five million in the MFA fossil fuel free bond fund. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Pettingill. The first motion carried. Thank you. We're on the second motion. I also didn't die. <coughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> Do you wish to speak to your mom? Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that there has work been done to date in ongoing communication with MFA on uh, on the MFA mortgage fund. Um, and I think it's a step in the right direction. I have some hesitation around providing backing to an already heated real estate market um, and concerns around that and whether that is really an appropriate place to be moving our fossil fuel free investments towards. So although I don't have entire visibility into what the fossil free bond, fossil fuel free bond is going to entail, um, I think that that is a more uh, agile place to be putting our money as the markets are changing at this time very rapidly. Yeah, so I was thinking of something either half and half to all of it in the fossil free fund. Um, I think it um, sends an important message. Um, I understand the MFA may be a bit disappointed, but I'm hoping what they will really hear is the actual eagerness of people to move forward uh, completely. Um, I, you know, would have some comfort with some money in the, the mortgage one. Um, just because the fossil fuel piece, I expect, is small, as you said, but will likely only get smaller if they're um, ensuring good returns. Um, so I, I wasn't overly concerned about the fossil fuel small portion of that one, given the broader context. I do have some hesitation on the line on mortgages, but um, uh, you know, I'm sort of torn about which way to go in and I'm kind of support this one. Any other comments on this one? Thank you. Uh, I'll be <laughs> I'll be supporting the, uh, this motion. I think that uh, this is one of the ways um, outside of our um, you know our corporate emissions and uh, and various policies we put in place for our community where we can really vote with our with our dollars and, uh, and to me the the um, fossil fuel free um, aspect of this is uh, is is very important and um, and uh, this the with the lower the lower fees and more um, uh, more options available to us. I, I'm comfortable in this uh, spot for that. So thank you. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, I'm not going to support the motion. I think MFA has dragged its feet on the way to a fossil fuel free fund, and I'd rather spend the time in our long term investment strategy looking at other providers of fossil fuel free investments, which I think are further along and more advanced than MFA. I'd rather see because of the investments we have in our real estate facility strategy and some of our master plans, I'd like to see a higher rate of return over the next three to five years. The staff have given me comfort that there is more money to be invested, uh, potentially long term, and I'd rather look at all of our options before we go this route. Um, MFA has been tone deaf to this for years, and I'm not sure I want to reward them with my fossil fuel free investment dollars, and I want this higher rate of return for the next three to five years. I will not be supporting them. Any other comments? Um, so, I guess I wasn't conceding of the idea of uh, just sitting on our cash for a bit longer might be an option, but it sounds like that is an option. No, I, I realize that. But. Is that an option in this process? It is an option. Sit on our cash for a little bit longer. That's right. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Councilor Anderson, Councilor French, Mayor Elliott opposed. It is a tie. Motion will So, uh, anyone support a different motion? We didn't get consensus. <laughs> I was hoping that one of you two would be doing it, but come over here, Councilor Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great introduction to the I was gonna take I was gonna take a s uh, I was gonna take a, a swing of putting together uh, a motion around uh, this amount of this amount of money um, to have staff come back uh, in a period of time this thirty days enough with 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 options um, fossil fossil free investment options um, for us to to consider um, at that time. Is that enough time? Is that real? Yeah, is that realistic before I, as a? Um. Because this homework is done for you this, by MFA. Yes, and if I have to see what other. Maybe the question is, what was your timing on the long-term financial planning piece that you supposed to? Mm -hmm. In 2020, <laughs> I would. I'm looking to the CEO here, mm -hmm. maybe three to six months. Um, I'm going to be a bit more assertive with the answer, yeah. if I might. Yeah. Sure. Um, Ms. Classen is in the middle of our TTP payroll go live project um, and short staff. She's acting CFO. I think sending her back out to do research over the next 30 days is not realistic, and I prefer putting that tight a time frame on it. Okay. Do you have a follow up? <coughs> no, I, I appreciate that. And Wait, did you put a motion before? No, I was crafting. You were it. crafting it. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't set. Yeah. So, um, I'll listen to the rest of the conversation. Okay. So Council friend. Group here. Oh wait, you had a Council Van Gogh. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I was going to move that to um, hold and until we're ready to. Review a broader set of fossil fuel free options, ethical options. There's second. Not seeing hands on the whole uh, option. I'm going to go over to Catherine French. Yeah, uh, my thought is we revisit this when uh, we're a full council because uh, my expectation was that if, if I were to bring a motion that is consistent with what the staff put in front of us, uh, it would be another 3-3 three, three vote. And if we hold off until there's seven of us. I think that you should test your motion. Okay, then I'll do that. Um, I'll move that the District of Squamish invest five million in the uh, Municipal Finance Authority Mortgage Fund for three projects. Is there a second? I'll set him in. <laughs> <laughs> 
You want to speak to your motion? Uh, it's clear to me that staff has done a lot of work on this, and uh, I think that the Municipal Finance Authority is going in a direction that we want it to go. And maybe they're not quite fully there where, where this council wants them to be from a fossil free perspective. Uh, I, I think this is a good first step, and I also think it's prudent financial investment for our community where we won't be leaving money off the table uh, over the next three to five years through our investment vehicles. I believe this fund is close enough to fossil fuel free for this short term that I can support this motion. Also, I don't like money sitting there not making money. Any other comments? Um, well, I guess, I, you know, I was comfortable putting some money into this fund, but not all of it. And you know, this does have the risk of have less liquidity, and um, you know, I am worried about all of that money, the, the mortgage exposure. Um, so I would have a hard time supporting that, especially when I, I think I heard that there are other better options out there. So I would prefer to find a, a path to some of those other options. Thank you. <clears throat> I think um, I won't be supporting this, I think that um, my preference would be, uh, and where I would be, that if we want to do something um, shorter term, when we got our, uh, when we did the, the longer term planning, that that could be uh, closer to the timeline of that planning, so it would come available again, and we can reinvest it. So my intention is not to leave money sitting on the, you know, um, sitting somewhere not performing, um, but to do a short-term investment now when we, when we do the rest of our homework so we can feel more comfortable um, making these investments um, with clear policy and goals going, going forward. Um, so I, I think that in this fund over that, um, over that time, um, it's kind of getting the midterm, which I'm not really comfortable with, with uh, those factors. Any other comments? All the question, all those in favor? Opposed? Councillors Stoner, Hedgeville, and Hartford opposed, motion fits. All right. So, this lesson, what is your deadline for getting back to MFA? Um, because the first phase was already, or has already been issued, uh, we have about a month or two to have what, sir? About a month or two before the next phase is going to be issued because I've missed the first phase <coughs> of the mortgage fund. Mm -hmm. Now we have the second phase of issuance, and so I would be getting into queue for that phase. So the longer we wait, the likelihood we may not make that queue, so we might, you know, it just gets pushed out. Um, not, not the end of the world, and um, we can always come back. Anybody know when council race is coming back? Um, <clears throat> back to our two, our two, our two, the two choices that you uh, compared and contrast for us. Uh, thank you. Um, without the lead time, and it looks like we can have we can come in and out of that of the of the bond fund. Mm -hmm. um, so, in the the longer term financial planning you said was going to take place in the next uh, in in 2020. We use some. Very close there. So if we if we went uh, if we approved a uh, a term like a to put the same amount of funds into the bond fund for 12 months when we do the when we do the planning, do you see a do you see um, an obstacle in in that? Or does that create any? No, I don't see an obstacle in that. Is except that currently you're getting we're getting 2.46 percent just sitting in the cash in in, in the Scotia Bank. So, if you would like to put it in the bond fund, it's 1.6 right. interest. So, so you're, you're and then the mortgage fund would give us the two uh, at the top end, 2.6 versus the 2.4. Yes. So, so it would provide better yield. So that that's why I would be recommending the mortgage fund right. over the bond fund. Um, it's okay for us just to keep it in the Scotia Bank. Perhaps we can put it in a high income. Savings account that provides us with a 2.6 percent. Mm -hmm. so we could do that, and it's relatively liquid. 
and we can come back and find any other long-term um, investments that are fossil fuel free and at the same time providing our long-range financial plan. Thank you. Well, that gives me comfort with, with um, a delay in the, uh, in the investment because the difference is quite, is quite small and we can formulate a more fulsome um, plan going forward. But I don't know if that. We will have any motion So I would rather the money be in the mortgage fund than sitting in a social bank account uh, with it having no requirements around fossil fuel free. Uh, so I am willing to consider a change in my vote. If, uh, and as such, I will put the motion back on the floor that District of Columbia invest $5 million in the MFA mortgage fund for three to five years. First, we need to put a motion for reconsideration. Ah, okay. Or the mayor can bring it back, just ah, throw it up. It was up. already defeated. So I'll leave that with the mayor. She wants to bring it back <laughs> for reconsideration. <laughs> you said this was going to be a short meeting. I did. <laughs> uh, I will bring back the motion for reconsideration. Can we invest? Five million in the MFA mortgage fund. Mortgage fund. Mortgage fund. Sorry, I won't take the word home. Okay, I can just call the question, can I? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Count Pettengill and Herford opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, consent agenda time. Is there anything on the consent agenda that you are in conflict with or that you would like to pull? Pull it now. Um, otherwise, it's a motion to approve the consent agenda. Dr. Pango. Uh, I just want to pull a uh, letter uh, I for one of the EV infrastructure. Okay. We'll take care of that uh, after the actual request. Okay, move the consent agenda. Moved by Councillor Stoner, seconded by Councillor Herford. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, motion carries. Um, I am in conflict on the first one and actually requested. So, uh, Councillor Anderson, you will need to chair this portion of the meeting. Uh, I sit on the board of the Whistler Center for Sustainability, uh, and so therefore, um, want to avoid any perception of bias in this vote, so I will refuse them. So, Councillor Anderson in the chair, uh, we have the letter before us uh, from Ching Ho. And it is uh, that the District of Squamish support the Resort Municipality of Worcester as the primary applicant to apply for, receive, and manage the UBCM grant funding for the development of a regional food recovery and distribution strategy on our behalf. Any discussion on this? Councilor Schultz. Yeah, I'll just speak to this briefly. I am, uh, I will support a letter of support from council uh, for this if that goes ahead. But I just want to share that as a council appointee to the Food Policy Council, there is some concern uh, with the nonprofits that work in this space around um, just representation at the table and, uh, and the Whistler Center of Sustainability taking on the facilitation role. Um, and so I'd also like uh, consideration from council for approval for myself to work with the Food Policy Council to draft a letter to the Winter Whistler Center of Sustainability uh, to uh, ensure that their concerns are effectively raised uh, as part of the grant process. That's your suggestion. Is there any other discussion, uh, Councillor Pettingham? Uh, I'm just wondering if what the timeline is on this and it makes sense to have some discussions beforehand. Would you need to be aware of that, Pastor Schumer? I don't know what the specific dates are. Um, the the feedback that I got wasn't like super substantial pushback, but it was just that there were some considerations they wanted raised. 
Um, and so I think that that can effectively be handled through the nonprofits themselves. Um, but I just wanted to raise that with council that there was a little bit of that consideration within the community members from Squamish. Um, and so uh, I'm happy to work with the Food Policy Council to ensure that they have a robust uh, response to that and communication line with the uh, Center of Sustainability. Would you like to put that forward as a motion? Garrett. Uh, no, I'm not going to pose a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be, be so bold. <clears throat> so, excuse me, but the suggested action from the letter is that council consider that motion because the grant application would require a motion, not a letter. So, um, that that's the that's the ask is that council consider a motion as, as recommended in the letter. I guess what I have in mind is is a motion to um, well we have two two then decisions to make and uh, we will we'll vote on this uh, and then in addition perhaps we'll come back to the suggestion of a, of a letter uh, as Councillor Stoner has suggested. So I'll move the I'll move the recommendation here. You'll move the recommendation. Seconder for the recommendation. There's no recommendation. Oh, sorry, the mo the suggested motion. The District of Squamish Council support the RMOW as a primary applicant to apply for, receive, and manage the UBCM grant funding for the development of a regional food recovery and distribution strategy on our behalf. And is there a seconder for Councillor Herbert's motion? Councillor Stoner seconds it. Any further discussion on that? Then we'll call a question. In, in favor? <laughs> One, two. Uh, then that motion passes. Then in addition, uh, the suggestion is that we'll write an additional letter. Is that what I understand, Councillor Stoner? And I don't know if I, uh, yeah, maybe a motion is, is useful, but um, so uh, move that councillors, can I make a motion about myself? Is that legitimate? Yeah. Move that Councillor Stoner work with the Food Policy Council to submit a letter to the Whistler Center of Sustainability articulating concerns around representation of Squamish nonprofits in this collaborative project. Second to that motion, Councillor Herford. And uh, any discussion? I'll speak to it myself. Uh, I have also uh, uh, been in touch with uh, persons with some concerns related to this, and so I'll be in support of this motion. I think it's a good gesture, and also just to foster on ongoing dialogue with the Worcester Center for Sustainability. Councillor Pettingle? In general, I'm supportive, but just a process question. Does it have to be, like normally the mayor's our, our communications person, can we delegate this sort of letter writing task to the councillor? Normally, it would go to the acting mayor. It can go to whoever council decides. And just to clarify, my suggestion is not that the letter necessarily come from council, but that I work with the representatives of the Food Policy Council to submit that letter, because uh, Helping Hand Society, the Squamish Food Bank, are all represented by the Food Policy Council. I'll just ask staff if, if you have a reasonably clear version of our motion on this. Thank you. Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Um, next up, uh, we had the um, Service Environmental Assessment public announcement of the amendments to their certificate. I'm not sure there's any action here. I wonder if I could ask uh, Council's view as to whether this letter might be referred to the manager of our community forest agreement, uh, Mr. Jeff Fisher, because the uh, we are aware that he is working on a plan that does involve the Stuamis Basin and he's looking at uh, the need for potential road investments just to make sure that Fortis and our community forest managers uh, are uh, working in sync. If that might be a reasonable thing, just to re request that this letter be uh, forwarded to our community forest manager. Second by Council Uh 
So those in favor? Those motion carries. Uh, any other comments on this? Was it very good? Just quickly, and I haven't had a chance to, to see the amendment, but just once again, acknowledge we are in a climate emergency, and um, I think there are a lot of things to work through here, um, including that and uh, different parts of the road, some of the disruption and so on. Uh, so I think there's a lot for us to do in here. So Buxton, will our comments uh, from the district be going through the working group on these amendments? What's the process here? Yes, typically these amendments are first referred to the, to the working group. Um, we can certainly bring those back if council, if, or in, in terms of bring that back in terms of what we want to present to the working group. Sure. Council Hannibal, just seeing that report. So maybe we move that staff bring back their recommendations to submit to the new um, this, this will be the first application that's subject to the new the new act. So it will be interesting to see how that happens. Right, we have to contemplate future generations and PhD initiatives and all this. Uh, is there a second for that? Is there a second? Uh, all those in favor? All those questions carries. Thank you. Who's representing us on that working group, Mr. Buckley? You mean? Thank you very much. <coughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, the next is a letter from the BC Mountaineering Club. Uh, they're seeking an amendment to the Garibaldi Provincial Park Master Plan. Um, and that correspondence from this group be referred to the Director of Community Planning and GM of Community Planning and Infrastructure. It's certainly the changes they're proposing would have an impact on tourism in the corridor, so. Um, that's good. Moved by Council French. Is there a second here? I'll second it. Second it. Would you like to speak to it as well? Thank uh, you. Not, hold on. Council French is first. Very good. Council French. Uh, I, I read through this report uh, with fascination. I was on the edge of my seat all the way through. Um, I, I'm excited by what's proposed here. I think uh, it all sounds um, progressive and uh, well thought out. And at minimum, I would like to see some public discussion about this and get some community feedback from um, park users for sure and the community at large. Um, I acknowledge that some people might not support what's being proposed here and might not support it vehemently. And uh, I think we need to hear from those folks and test what kind of support is out there for what's being proposed. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. A couple of things arise for me in reading this letter, and I'll uh, spell them out for the consideration of staff. Firstly, uh, there is an account of the history of the creation of Garibaldi Park, which is missing a certain um, um, piece, and that is the role of Squamish, our community, and our Board of Trade and Chamber of Commerce, which play, has played all along a major role in the creation and management and advocacy for Garibaldi Park that's missing. That is significant because um, um, it, it, it leads me to think that some t the, the awareness on the part of the BC Mountaineering Club sometimes is a little bit lacking on that and I'm wondering whether they might be encouraged to do a little bit more outreach here in Squamish, for example a public information meeting. I've only found out about this through because a personal friend is involved and a Facebook page that I'm signed on to, but otherwise I think the local public has rather little knowledge of this amendment. Secondly, uh, reading the fine print here, every one of our four service roads is mentioned, including needed investments in those roads, like new bridges. Uh, there's reference to two or three decommissioned roads with the express desire that they be recommissioned. We had recently decided to send a resolution to the Union of BC Municipalities Convention on Natural Resource Roads, and I'd like to encourage the BC Mountaineering Club to work in tandem with us and local governments in general to address issues on funding for and policy administration of natural resource roads. Thank you. Can I just ask a question? If we're gonna refer this to to important people in the district. Are they going to be responding to it? I'm sorry, are we going to? Respond. Like we can refer it to you, but are you actually going to 
respond with feedback? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Like, I think what I'm hearing from council is that it's not just a reading exercise. Like, here, since you don't have enough to read. But, like, there's some significant issues in there. Mm -hmm. If I might jump in to the mayor, one question I had when I hear from council say they want to hear from the community is there a council expectation that the district run public engagement? I no. hope not, thank you. <laughs> on our job. Heather. Have we heard from the province on this? Has Parks asked for feedback from the community? This is just a, an interesting starting point for this discussion to come from a... This is the first I've heard of this, but that just means that's the first I've heard of it. Right. I, this also ties into our work in community force, um, and, uh, and I know there's some, been some expression from members of our community about um, the potential for um, furthering mountain bike access through from Elfin Shelter to Alice Ridge in particular to have a, a signature Alpine loop. I know this is of interest to pieces of our community. So um, maybe the ask is also to ask uh, parks to engage with our community on, on this as we, as I'm seeing some- Is it uh, parks or is it the mountaineering mm -hmm. club? You see, because well, they're, they're behind this amendment. Is it an amendment for or is this a, this is the, um... This is their proposed amendment to parks, so they have to get parks on the side. I thought it was a submission to the parks. So I understood this to be a submission to parks, um, master plan, amendment to the master plan. It is, but they're proposing it. It's not oh, parks The parks not led. <coughs> this is being led by the, uh, I was, uh, DC Mountaineering Club. Fair enough. But I am generally hearing consensus that our feedback to the club is you need to engage this community, not just send us a letter. Thank you. Yeah, when I read it, and I don't you know, have a strong perspective at, at this point other than some a bunch of red flags went up for me in terms of the funding or some of the seemed unrealistic in terms of um, additional park fees from people attending and seem to be a fair number of expectations on what we would provide as a district to support this and um, you know, I didn't see anything there. And we're talking about uh, our search and rescue, how are they supported and funded and other provincial infrastructure need and camping and backcountry stuff and so on. And I didn't see any of that addressed and you know, I think this would need to come with some real big caveats around all that being in place. Um, I also wonder too about Squamish Nation and how far we want to go endorsing this without a conversation with them. I, I don't know the geography well enough, but I remember in some of the Garibaldi Squamish conversations, there were Squamish Nation members concerned about track lines and all that sort of thing. I don't know if that applies here, but these are the questions that we come from my mind. Yeah. So we're not endorsing this, we're merely referring it to staff so that they can respond to some of the initial concerns that they see and that have been raised by council and encourage them to engage with the community <clears throat> early and often. And given the NDP just cut the park budget, uh, I will call the question all those in favor of the public series. Hey, uh, Council Pangale, you pulled the first letter? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to refer this to Last time we referred to the zoning bylaw rewrite? Yes, that's yes. one, two. Yes, please. Moved by Councilor Tangel, second by Councilor Stone. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Um, okay, that's it. Uh, any open question period? Clarification? That was approved as part of the oh, consent okay. agenda. It's already been referred to staff. Um, okay, yes. Open question period. Anybody have any questions? No? All right. Any council or staff announcements? Uh, I want to highlight that coming up on Friday, at the West Coast Railway Heritage Park, uh, it's the annual Whiskers and Wine event in support of the SPCA, uh, the Sea Sky Ranch. It's a great event every year, and uh, 
for those who like a good party, this is definitely one. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I'd like to uh, just offer my, my condolences to the to everyone affected um, uh, by the, the tragedy that happened on um, I guess that was it was Friday night with uh, where our community lost a, a, a young a young member of three year old. Um, two-year-old child, um, and um, it's something that's uh, uh, deeply affected uh, all parts of the community and, and even those that didn't uh, have a direct connection to the family or the, or the child. So I know our community is holding their, uh, their children a little bit tighter as they, as they walk around, and um, I encourage everyone to, uh, to just take a, take a deep breath and be... Uh, and, um, and hold their loved ones close. So, condolences to the family. Yes, on Friday I had the uh, opportunity to represent Squamish Screenkeepers at an event at the West Vancouver. Um, let's see, what's the new title of it? Is the Marine Science um, former DFO Fisheries Lab? <laughs> <laughs> Um, to be they, they have been renamed uh, Pacific Science Enterprise Center. Uh, the topic was um, vessels of concern and marine debris. And it was most interesting session with presentations from Transport Canada and Canadian Coast Guard, among others. It was clear that they're moving in a direction that we would all uh, be very uh, pleased with, but they lack resources. But another thing is that uh, there were many um, um, signs during the meetings that um, of the value of collaboration in the house on, within the house on region to set priorities and to work together on advocacy for funding for these necessary programs for our marine waters. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just give a heads up that on Saturday, Glacier Air is hosting the start of International Women's Week of Aviation event. Um, they will offer free flights on a first come first serve basis starting at 10 a.m. and there will be cake cutting at 12.30 and it'll be a wonderful event. Those free flights for women and girls first and foremost? Yeah. Or anybody? I'm actually not sure. I think it's women, women and girls. girls. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, motion to terminate. This is by Councillor Herford, second by Councillor Stoner. All those in favor? All those motion carried.